A trend that I've noticed over the last few years is the people around me are replacing their laptops, not with another laptop, but with iPads. And most of the people younger than me have an iPad as their primary computing device. But what they might not know is that it can be more than just a giant phone screen to watch YouTube videos and send emails. Well, I'm here to talk about some of those super cool features. Let's start. Okay, these are some features that I found super useful for myself and I just love to let more people know about. But at the same time, a few of these features might be completely obvious to more techie audiences and might cater more towards casual iPad folks. And some might be more techie or niche. So I'll try to organize these features in order of how easy it would be for a regular everyday person to set up and use. Signing documents is a crucial part of life. When you make a major decision, you gotta sign some paper. Like when you buy your first car, you rent your first apartment, sign a restraining order against your weird neighbor, paying lawyer fees, and when you move apartments. It all requires signing papers. A lot of the times, it's someone sending you a PDF over email, but signing that can be a huge pain. You could print it out, sign it, and rescan it, but then you gotta use a printer, and that's literally the stupidest piece of tech that should work 100% of the time, but it doesn't. There are also online options and apps that let you sign PDFs, but that can clutter your device. However, did you know that you can use iPadOS, iOS, or even macOS's built-in markup function to quickly sign PDFs without relying on online tools or downloading an additional app specifically catered to do that that would then sit on your phone for that one-off chance you might need it again. All you have to do is open up the PDF on your iPad, hit share, then scroll down to hit the word markup. From there, you can sign the document using your Apple Pencil or your fingers. Okay, but maybe instead you have a printed out copy I wanna quickly scan a document so that you can send it off in an email. You can open your files app and then hit the three ellipses on the right. From there, you have an option to scan your documents to your iPad. So now you have the option to sign your document before you scan it through this feature or scan it and then add it later through markup. Super useful when you need a random document side when you're nowhere near a printer. And this would also help you from spending extra money on that expensive printer ink and paper anyway. While using an iPad, there might also be some times where you find your iPad lacking and you want to do more things with it. If you have ever done a voice recording on an iPad or iPhone, you know that the quality is just okay. If you wanna record something of higher quality and on external microphones beyond just your iPad, you can plug in a microphone through the USB type C port and use it in the voice memos app or basically any other app that supports this. Now, I'm not saying that it will help you stop sounding like a bad AI on the first 100 or so takes, but it'll be higher quality at least. This is the audio I recorded on my iPad connected to an external microphone. It sounds so much better than the standard microphone built directly into the iPad. And if you don't like the built-in front camera of your iPad for your video calls, you can also plug in an external webcam or mirrorless camera the same way and start using it in video call apps. But you probably also noticed that the iPad, unlike a laptop, only has one port for charging and accessories. So if you want to do anything with it, you have to use just one thing and be very intentional about it. Unless that is, you get something like this from today's sponsor, Anchor. Anchor makes two iPad focused hubs between the Anchor 551 and 541 USB type C hubs. The Anchor 551 eight in one USB type C hub has a built-in tablet stand to raise and lower your iPad to the perfect height and comes with eight different ports to do everything you could possibly need. It has an SD and micro SD card slot, a port to plug into your iPad, HDMI 2.0, a 100 watt charging USB type C port, two USB A ports, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This is perfect for an iPad desk setup so that you have your iPad front and center at the perfect height so that you're not straining your neck looking downward. And it's great to plug in a secondary display through HDMI to your iPad with all of the different ports that you'd need to get your work done. If you're more of a on the go type of person, the Anchor 541 six in one USB-C hub connects directly to your iPad without dangling off a cable and provides you with an HDMI 2.0, five gigabit per second USB-C and USB-A port. It also has micro and SD card slots and the same 3.5 millimeter headphone jack all in a compact package. This makes sure that you're not tethered to a single location, but both of these open up the door to use your iPad as more than just an entertainment device and can help you maximize your productivity by letting you plug in external hard drives, wired headphones, and charging your iPad all at the same time. So if you're interested in getting a USB Type-C hub 
for your iPad and maximizing your productivity, check out the Anchor 551 and 541 USB-C hubs in the link in the video description below. And thanks again to Anchor for sponsoring this portion of the video. If you think about it, the iPad is literally just a giant screen. It would be great if you could use its screen with other things too, right? One of the coolest features of iPad OS is Sidecar. This is the ability to use your iPad as a secondary screen for your Mac. To do this, you can pull your iPad directly into your Mac and tell it to trust the attached iPad. Or instead, you could be signed into the same Apple ID on both devices and be on the same Wi-Fi network. From there, you can just click screen sharing on your Mac and now you're able to use your iPad as a secondary display for your computer. It's really cool and has definitely come in clutch and is super useful for those times where you don't have access to an external monitor. In my own life, I found it especially helpful when traveling and needing a second display while I'm out editing YouTube videos or writing scripts. Sadly, Sidecar is macOS only, so if you own a Windows machine, you can instead use apps out there that can do similar functions like Duet Display, which I used to recommend, but keep in mind, this used to be a one-time purchase, but now they switch to subscription plans, which is super annoying. But there are alternative ways to connect your iPad to your PC or Mac as a secondary display. All you need is one of these cheap capture cards and an HDMI cable, and you can just plug it directly into the iPad. This one uses USB type A, but they do sell available USB type C ones on Amazon. From there, you can use a free app like Orion to display a second display on your iPad. The colors might be a little bit off and it's a little funky at times, but using this method is not limited to just a computer. You can plug in anything, and I mean anything, that outputs to an HDMI port. So if you wanted to plug your PS5, Nintendo Switch, or PC without a monitor to your iPad as a temporary display, here you go, this is an option. It's definitely a unique use case for the iPad. The iPad is more computer-like than you think. You can expand your iPad's display to another screen altogether by just plugging it into a monitor through a USB Type-C cable. This gives your iPad another display so that you can use it almost like a laptop being plugged into an external monitor. You can have up to four windows open on the external display and still have room on the iPad screen to have another app. I do like using it this way, and I have a video talking about using the iPad as a laptop replacement, and I explain this feature in way more detail, including all of the different pros and cons of it. So check that out if you're interested. But overall, this comes in handy if I don't have my laptop around with me and wanna organize everything I'm looking over to get things done instead of swapping between different apps. Okay, now we're getting a little power user-y. Over the last few years, I've been using a NAS for a lot of my data storage needs, and you can tell because I've made quite a few videos about it. It basically acts like my personal cloud storage, and the iPad can make use of all of it to share files. If you do have a NAS or server, you can connect to them and access those files on your iPad like a regular computer. Just go into the Files app, click on the three ellipses, and select Connect to Server. From here, you just type in the server address and login info associated with the server or NAS, and you're in. You can now move files to your iPad or from your iPad to your NAS, just like that. Super helpful if you work in an environment that requires some level of collaboration that might require reviews and sharing of files between coworkers and even just managing your own stuff. Okay, so lately I've been traveling a lot for work and in those cases, I like to bring a couple of things with me. I bring my work laptop, my personal laptop to edit YouTube videos or access applications my iPad can't, my iPad for entertainment for the plane and in hotels with no streaming options, and sometimes a gaming handheld in case I need to unwind a little. You can already tell that it takes up quite a bit of space in my bag. It's heavy and TSA is gonna make me take all of this stuff out, scan it and put it all back into my bag, increasing the risk that I accidentally forget to grab something at airport security and just straight up lose it. So what ended up happening is I started to just leave my laptop and gaming console at home. But then you might think, how are you editing videos or playing games? Great question. All through my iPad. How does that make any sense? Well, the internet or more specifically the cloud. If you have a decent internet connection at home, it makes it very viable to do all these things directly from your iPad. Now, is it a one-to-one -one experience? <laughs> no, but I will say it's about 80 to 90% there. I use Jump Desktop, a one-time purchase app that lets my iPad remotely connect to my computers 
at home from wherever I am. But I did try a few screen sharing type apps similar to Jump Desktop like TeamViewer and AnyDesk, but this was the best one I found for iPad in terms of responsiveness, audio latency, and just overall performance. With Jump Desktop, I managed to get a pretty good connection with minimal lag to do what I need to do on my computer even just hotspotting off of my phone or using slow hotel Wi-Fi. It feels similar to just having a laptop in hand. If I wanna play games, I just whip out a PS5 controller and connect to my PC through Steam Link or my PS5 through PlayStation Remote Play. And now I'm off streaming my games. Of course, with all these scenarios, there are slight delays depending on your internet connection, both where you're using your iPad and your devices at home. So I recommend that you try to plug in all the devices that you have at home into ethernet ports so that these machines are running on the best connection possible and you also need to make sure that these devices are on or asleep at least so that you can connect to them from across the country. This definitely isn't perfect. You could have scenarios like there's a power outage at home or you have the wrong game disc in the PS5 or the Steam game has weird launchers. These could all lead to different issues. But if you're in a position where you only need these extra devices occasionally and they're not necessarily a necessity, then this is a great way to save space in your bag and leave all your stuff at home so you don't necessarily have to worry about them and you can just carry light. So those are some of the really cool features I picked up from owning an iPad over the years and forcing myself into experiments like trying to use it as my only device and things like that. Some of them, I admit, are a bit gimmicky and might have limited usage for some people, but a lot of these unique use cases have really helped me in my own life from a productivity standpoint. But what do you personally think? Are these tips helpful? Do you have any additional tips that you found useful that I may have missed? Leave all that down in the comment section below, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.